Uh, I'm Clay Doobie. I have some friends and colleagues in the back, Craig Steubing. I also have Catherine Gao and Jacqueline, who is a graduating student uh, and is also an employed student. She already has a job, so we congratulate her on that. Uh, let's move on. We are not uh, we are not the youngest of Annenberg centers, but we're the newest arrival. We were created in 2006, uh, and we came to Annenberg in 2011. So we've been around a relatively short time compared to the Knight Center, compared to the Norman Lear Center. Uh, what are we about? Uh, first and foremost, the US-China relationship. The US-China relationship is the most important single bilateral relationship. Uh, and you'll see some evidence of that in just a moment. And we are working to enhance public understanding of this, to inform public discussion of that relationship. That relationship is, of course, multidimensional. All of the presentations that you've just seen, there's a China part of that. There's definitely a China part of that. Uh, when Marty, for example, talks about Nigeria being a big producer of films. Of course, China is both a big producer and a big consumer, the second largest film market. And growing at 30% a year, it will pass North America in just a couple of years. And so it's really quite, quite remarkable. When Jonathan or Aaron holds up, hold up a phone, of course, the biggest mobile market is China. So everybody everywhere has a China angle health education, health journalism. We talk about health care reform here, but in fact, China initiated a $124 billion health care reform two years before the United States. And so there's a health care angle to virtually all of these things. And so that's what we try to do, is to inform public discussion that the relationship is complex, changing, and central to our future. The second point is we are part of the Annenberg effort to create the top program focusing on Chinese communication, media, and public diplomacy, to be the place where people come if they want to know about what's going on in the world's biggest media market. That's what uh, the Institute's about. Now, does China matter? Of course. It does. Does the United States and China together matter? Absolutely. If we look at global GDP, these two countries account for more than a third of it. More than a third. And that number is growing. If we look at global population, our two countries account for a fourth of the world's population. This relationship matters. Global trade. One fourth of global trade involves the United States or China. If you look at global defense spending, however, our proportion is still higher. The two countries account for almost half of every dollar spent on defense, 48% with 39% coming from the United States. Our two countries matter. China is increasing its defense spending by double digits every year for the last five, and so it's building its military, the United States, of course, already has the world's foremost military. How about global CO2 emissions? Once again, we're doing more than our share. 25% of the world's people are producing 44% of the greenhouse gases. The US used to be number one in this category, but China has shot past, has shot past. So yes, this relationship has implications for all of us. So in informing public discussion, in encouraging a deeper understanding of the nature of this relationship and its importance, we do this in a variety of ways. And for the two or three students who may have somehow wandered in, uh, I, I want to reach out to you because we involve students in all of the things that we do. Faculty are involved in all these things, but we have the door open for students, too. We support research. We disseminate research. We make it available. We produce timely and reliable publications and documentaries. We'll give you evidence of that in just a moment. We're involved in an extensive and influential public event 
uh, series. Last week, we focused on the American rebalancing to Asia with particular attention to Taiwan. Last night, we had a presentation uh, by a book author uh, writing on the contest. Uh, we also have professional development programs. Uh, similar in some ways to what Knight does, it's very hands-on and very basic, but we'd like to do more of this and to involve, as Ernie suggested, we should be doing it with journalists and others. Innovative graduate and undergraduate training. We do not yet, we do not yet have a minor in U.S.-China relations in the media, but we hope to have one. And we're infusing a China component into many classes, not just here at Annenberg, but elsewhere as well, across the campus. Now, one of the things that we've been devoting considerable energy to over the last two years is this binational commission, U.S.-China binational commission on uh, U.S.-China relations, an, an effort to improve the relationship by enhancing trust. And Dean Wilson is one of the chairs of this. The other chair is in Beijing at Beijing University, Wang Ji Su, former head of the School for International Studies there. What, uh, I'll show you the results of this study in just a moment, but basically our report, which you see on the right, uh, this report grew out of intense meetings that we had in Washington and in Beijing, all of the commissioners, this binational group, and we met with government officials, civic organ leaders of civic or organizations, with media representatives and others to understand what are the real obstacles to fostering trust between the United States and China. We carried out, in addition, interviews with key, uh, key figures, looked at the literature, we've compiled survey data, and this report uh, hopefully will be public, public soon. Now, what did we find? Well, we concluded, as does everybody else, that trust is essential for a healthy relationship. And unfortunately, although the United States are joined at the hip, even though that we have all of this interdependency, 6,000 Americans go on average every day to China. 4,000 Chinese on average come to the United States, most of them, by the way, coming through LAX. So we have all kinds of exchange. We have more than 3,000 students from China in our classes here at USC. But all of this interdependency, all of this interaction has not produced greater trust. When you get a chance to look at the report, you can see details about this. Here's just one chart. And it shows surveys over time from 2005 through 2013 conducted by an organization at the behest of the BBC. And what you see here is this red line spiking up. That red line represents Chinese looking at the United States. And you ask, is the United States good or bad in the world? Is the impact of the United States good or bad? And you see now almost seven out of 10 Chinese answer, bad. Asked Americans the same question about China, it's almost six out of 10. And so the issue of trust, the issue of feeling comfortable with the other party is a huge one and a growing one. So we look at that and we say, what can we do? What can be done? And so the commission has come up with several recommendations under, these, under this theme of next generation. Next generation people, meaning, as you'll see, bringing in new folks. Uh, next generation platforms, primarily technological opportunities that we need to seize. And next generation programs that draw on the best practices of all that exist. So here, for example, we mentioned young people. In these surveys, the only folks, the only folks in the two countries that have a positive image of the other are people under 30. And it's just barely, okay? <laughs> but that's the opportunity. That's the opportunity. Older people uh, have a much more negative opinion. And so we want to involve young people, and we also want to reach out to folks who have not been engaged. 
And here we're talking about business communities, business organizations, corporations, and other groups who have not been involved in the U.S.-China discussion. Second point, we want to embrace these new technological platforms. This makes the Chinese nervous. Uh, they are great users of social media, but they are very nervous about it. They have more than 30,000 people whose job it is to censor the Twitter, uh, the Twitter equivalent in China. So, but this is a way to expand our reach to people we can't physically meet and to deepen that reach over time. So it's not just a couple of hours, it's not just a couple of days, but it's a contact, it's a program that solves real problems over an extended period. And that's that third point. We have found that task-oriented programs are the ones that matter, the ones that have an impact. If you just get together and say, let's talk about being friends, that has a very limited, limited influence. So we have proven approaches. Now, we don't just talk the talk, we also are walking this walk by coming up with the first and only comprehensive catalog of all the exchanges that exist between the United States and China. And these exist in all sorts of dimensions, on the diplomatic, government front, for example, California has a new office in, in Shanghai, that sort of thing we document, but also all the education, all the scientific, the sports exchanges, all of those kinds of things uh, will be available in this database. We've already been collecting it, and the database is ready to go live very soon. Why do this? Why do this? Well, it's very clear that there's a knowledge deficit. We all know that there's issues between the United States and China over intellectual property, over territorial claims in the South China Sea and the North and the East China Sea, rivalries with Japan, these kinds of things. We all know this because it's on the news. It's on television news, it's in the headlines. Ordinary folks are talking about it. They'll even spoof it occasionally on Saturday Night Live or something. But what we don't talk about are all of the ways that we're working together to address real problems associated with public health, urban, urban planning, these sorts of things. And we want to bring that information together, make it more accessible, so that more of the story of the US-China relationship can be understood. We want to show the range, the impact, do these kinds of things. Also, this will be a, a go-to source for those who want to start programs of their own. Those who want to learn what works and where the cliffs lie. How can I avoid those problems? That's what the database is about. Other research projects that we have involve visiting scholars. We used to uh, have faculty grants, but for reasons of uh, diminished resources, we haven't been able to give faculty grants recently, but we've done a lot of that in the past. We still support graduate students. We still have visiting scholars, postdocs, these sorts of things. Some examples of some of the work that our students are doing on copyright enforcement, on cultural industries, on uh, social emotions, the US-China comparison, blogging in China, all sorts of topics. Annenberg students have received these grants as well as students elsewhere at the university. And many of these have uh, formed the basis for dissertation projects and others have actually become uh, journal articles and that sort of thing. We mentioned disseminate, bring research together, disseminating it. We had a big conference, a very successful conference, just last November. Over time, we've had 11 of these big, uh, big to-dos. And this conference focused on how do we see each other? Where do those images come from? How do they shape our understanding of the other? How, do our, how are our policies influenced by our understandings. And so we called it Through Tinted Lenses, and everybody had tinted lenses at the conference. We had about, at its, at its peak, we had more than 200 people in attendance. Presentations, including members of the Annenberg faculty, spoke on these issues, geopolitics, business, all sorts of topics. And if you're interested, please go to our website, china.usc.edu, where you can see all of these presentations. Another research project involves Assignment China. 
We, we have been making documentaries since our founding uh, in 2006, but our big documentary project, our ongoing one, looks at the work of journalists in China. The work of journalists in China. And one of the striking things about that is the sort of reception that we've had. We've completed, uh, so far, five episodes. And on the left, you have the journalist that traveled with Nixon to China. And on the right, you have a journalist working in Shanghai today. Uh, he has a, essentially a gas mask on. Okay. We've received a claim for this project. Uh, so Ambassador Gary Locke wrote to us to thank us for it. And he knows of what he speaks in part because his wife hosted a screening of one of the Assignment China segments. And this is the television broadcast of that screening. Uh, I've been signaled that uh, time, is, time is an issue, so I won't have time to show you clips from the two episodes that we're going to have the first public screening of this, uh, this spring. The first of these focuses on the mid-1980s and the issues there and makes direct connections between what journalists reported and policies that were determined in, uh, in Washington. Uh, the second focuses on the 25th anniversary of the demonstrations and their violent suppression in Tiananmen Square in 1989. We have two magazines. Our students produce these. The first is U.S. China Today, uh, which has been cited in the Wall Street Journal, Bloomberg Business Week, and elsewhere. We produce a lot. Our, our students are involved in collecting these uh, reports and uh, producing them. We also produce Asia Pacific Arts, which looks at the uh, variety of popular media, mu music, music, movies, video games, this sort of thing, interviews, reviews, and more. And we're involved in teacher training. We have trained more than 600 teachers over the last five, six years. And those 600 teachers today in schools here in Southern California are teaching 90,000 students. So this is one way that we have impact. Uh, and we have other evidence as well. But let me stop here. I uh, was going to talk about more of what we have, have coming and open up to your questions, your comments. 